Hi everyone, it's Penny Black and Jill Foster here with another PB&J card class video and we are continuing right along with video 7 of 10 of our Start Stamping series and today is all about giving the spotlight technique a try with some of your favorite floral stamps. So sometimes we have these beautiful florals and it's fun to have just another way to use them sort of in your arsenal of ideas. So we're going to do that today. Before we begin, I just wanted to mention if this is your first time checking out this Start Stamping video series, the goal is to share my personal creative process as a professional designer to help you start enjoying your hobby with less decision fatigue, start collecting products that you will use and love, and to start using your stash. So like in all the other videos, I'm going to follow that same creative process and I hope that process inspires you as well as the products and the projects. So I start by selecting and gathering limited supplies. For this technique, I know I'm starting off with this technique, so I'm going to look for floral stamps that I can also stamp in multiple directions or turned on their side, not just straight up and down. And I want some type of die, a frame die, that cuts all the way around the frame. It doesn't just do stitching around a panel, but it actually cuts out the entire frame. So I have grabbed the floral stamps from Penny Black Prized and Expressive, and then those are new, and from my stash, I've grabbed the Square Frames die cut. Once I have those things, I put them in a little box, and I keep that handy as I'm working on this project. Then I move on to just a die cutting session. And the only thing I had to die cut here were these um, square frames. And I cut them from some gold uh, shimmering cardstock just to mix things up and for a little extra shine on the card. Now I'm ready to start stamping. I am going to have to go in and do a little bit of die cutting with this one for this technique, but I will show you that. So I'm going to start by stamping this onto Canson 140 pound watercolor paper using the Misty Stamp Positioning Tool and Ranger Archival Ink in the color of Shadow Gray. I chose this color for two reasons. One, I want the non-spotlighted portion to be pretty subtle. And then the part that I end up painting in, I want that to have a no line watercolor look. And this does a pretty good job of that. Now I'm going to kind of twist and turn this stamp all different directions so that I cover the whole card. And that is where why I was looking for stamps that I could twist and turn and didn't just have to be in one orientation. Then I will go ahead and put that square frames over my stamping. I'm going to use a piece of painter's tape, but I'm going to kind of dab it off on my sweater a little bit and my work surface so it's not too sticky to hold that frames die in place. And then I'll run that through the die cutting machine and you'll see here, this is what I'm left with. I've got the internal, sort of the inner panel, the outer frame that's left, which I'm just going to go ahead and just tape down to my card, um, to my card panel. This is a standard A2 size card, four and a quarter by five and a half inches. Then from my little envelope that's in my box, I've got my gold frame. So I'm just testing out here the white and the gold. And then I will have that panel on the inside. So it kind of gets put back together like a puzzle, only I'm going to use that gold frame inside there. So I've got everything set up here with the stamping and die cutting ahead of time, just using a few little dots of glue to add this gold frame inside that panel. And I will repeat this process for the rows as I go. So working assembly line style. I'm not going to finish this whole card and then go back and start from step one all the way again for the rows. I'm going to do all the stamping, all the die cutting, and all of this step by step for both cards. And if I was doing 10 cards, I would do it that way too. It's sort of that assembly line. I love that. That actually is pretty, I think, just like that. You could stamp a sentiment right there in the middle and call it done. <laughs> but this is about using that floral stamp. So now I've got those internal panels that are ready for color. And you can have those setting ready to go whenever you get a chance to be able to sit down 
and do your painting. That's one of the ways things I love about this creative process is that it allows me to stop and start easily. So I'm going to paint this using Distress Ink reinkers used as watercolors. You can see I've just added them to a little plastic palette. I think I got that at Walmart or Target. I also have some water in a cup, just clear water, and a paper towel off camera there. So I am picking up the ink. If I want it lighter, I'm going to do it with a brush that has more water on it. If I want it to be really saturated, I won't have as much water on my brush or like there it was more saturated than I wanted I'm going to go in with a pretty wet brush and blend it out so I did my background first now I'm going to go in and paint these flowers I start by picking up that ink from the tray and putting it down where I want it to be the darkest then I can go rinse off my brush in the water, pat it on the paper towel, and come back with just a very, very um, almost dry brush and blend out the color towards the lightest area. Then I can keep going back in, and if I want a little bit more darkness in an area, I can put that in right on top and layer up that color. You can see here that I'm not working on petals that are right next to each other because I don't want the wetness from one petal right next to the wetness of another petal because then the inks might start blending into each other. So you just kind of jump your way around the image. You can see there I put the darker colors in and then with a little bit darker there and the dark I decide where to put the darker colors just by if it's a petal that's under another one where those ones start layering over the top, that's where I want it to be darkest. Another great place to look if you're looking for shading ideas is on the packaging that comes with your stamp. So I'm just working my way around, jumping from petal to petal. Once one's dry, I'll move up right next to it. I'm also leaving just some areas of white, and to be totally honest, I'm just randomly putting them on there. <laughs> But just a little white spot here and there really does add a lot of life, add a lot of life to your stamped image. And um, you don't need to be too technical about it. So I am just, even some spots where I want it to be a little bit darker, I will drop in a little bit of red. Now all of the exact colors that I'm using, all of the supplies that I'm using, the paper, the paintbrush, the exact colors of Distress Reinkers, everything is listed for you down in the YouTube description box below. And all of the Penny Black products that I'm using, the stamps, the dies, those are all listed and linked for you down in the YouTube description box below. So if you want more details on that, be sure to look down there because I've kept track of all of that for you. You can see here, I just keep working around. Now, if you don't have time or if you're not very patient, which is often me sometimes when I'm doing this, you can use a heat tool to dry that. If you need to work on two petals that are right next to each other and one isn't dry yet, you can use your heat tool, heat tool to speed up that drying process. Lastly, I'm sort of very lightly adding some color to these parts of the petal that are folding over the top part. Now I've just grabbed a Tombow Dual Brush Pen to darken up some of these details on the flower. I could also paint those in, but I find I have just a little bit more control with the marker than with my paintbrush. So I'm just doing that with the marker. I'm adding in some greens here on the buds, just keeping things pretty simple. Darker on the outside and lighter towards the center. To get it darker, that's where I'm coming in with it's mostly just straight ink from the palette. Lighter, I'm going to have a little bit more water to dilute that down. And then finally, just like I used a marker on the centers of the flowers, I'm using a Pit Artist pen, which is just a very fine tip marker to get these stems. You could do it with a paintbrush as well, but this is just easier for me. I have better control. Now that I've done all of the painting, I'm ready to start assembling. Off camera, I also painted the one with the rose, again, working in that assembly line style. 
And this is pretty easy assembly because we already did part of it for that first step um, at the beginning. I got to figure out which way to put this in. It's kind of like a puzzle matching up with that, the rest of that border. Sorry about my head there. And then I've also just added a super simple sentiment on this one because I felt like the painting had enough detail. And then here's a look at that mirrored gold frames die. I love that die and it's really great for this technique. And then here's the rose one. Same technique, same steps, just a different stamp there in the middle. You could fill that up with all of your favorite floral stamps following this technique and this layout. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also hit that bell icon so you're notified of the next upload. We have still have a couple more videos left in this series. And remember, you can continue to connect with Penny Black on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, our website, our blog, and all of those are listed for you in that YouTube description box below and linked. Happy stamping!